Hello everyone, it's Helen here and thank you for joining me today. Now today's project is going to be this watercolour flower box. So I'll uh, give you the measurements for this. This measures 2 inches by 4 inches. Uh, yeah, 2 inches by 4 inches. So it's a really nice size box and we'll be making a tag as well. And also we're going to do some watercolouring. So let's get on with the stamp set that we're going to be using today. So I've got mine from Hobby Art Limited. It's the May special and the link will be in my, on my website and that will be down below. So everything will be, um, everything that I've used today will be on the website. So um, I think I've used, I definitely used this flower and I have used this one here as well. So we're going to do some watercolour so you're going to need an aqua painter or a paintbrush. So I've used these leaves as well. Okay, so we'll move that aside. So we're going to be using some watercolour paper. So let's start with the lid first. So this lid measures 6 by 6 This is watercolour paper. This was cut from an A4 piece. I buy all my watercolour paper in A4. And let me just grab a, an acrylic block here. I think we'll start with the leaves first. Okay, so I'm going to be using some dye-based inks just to get started. So I'm going to start off with some pear pizzazz. This is Stampin' Up Ink. So with the stamp set, just before we get started, so with the stamp set, they also send you this worksheet as well. So I took my inspiration from this card here. So it's a watercolouring technique. So all the instructions for this with the stamp set so that's really handy it's very well thought out okay so I'm going off the page okay so those are our leaves Okay, so the other colours I've used are Rose Red and Wisteria Wonder. So I'm using all of my favourite colours today. So, um, where did I put the... There we are, it's right in front of me. Right, so get that down. So I'm just alternating the position here of... Um, the stamp so it doesn't all look the same. Okay, so that's the pink one done. Moving over to Wisteria Wonder for the smaller flower. So yeah, these outline flowers are absolutely perfect for doing watercolour techniques. Press that down wondering what that was that was a bus driving past my house I've got all of the windows open it's actually a very hot day here today so I'm trying to get this filming in early before my camera starts to overheat and then it will turn off halfway through filming which is well not ideal is it so I've got my sentiment mounted here I'll show you the stamp set that that came from so I'm just gonna mount my flat uh, leaf not flower and I've used old olive old olive one of my favorite greens so it's just a little bit of a variation there on the greens so it doesn't matter if it overlaps that's fine okay so there we go I'm gonna quickly clean up here and then I'll be back again to watercolor Okay, so I've just quickly zoomed in. I've got my aqua painter ready. Okay, so I'm just going to squeeze the water out first just to get it going. Okay, I've got a spare bit of kitchen towel there. So all we have to do is with our wet paintbrush, go along the outline, just picking up the colour and then bring it in, bringing it in towards the edge. So we are actually going for um, a more a more subtle look there so if you want to actually build on this color you can go back to your ink pad uh, squeeze it 
so it's on the in here and you can pick up the color and then you can add some dimension just like that but we're not going to be doing that today so just go around all of your just give it a gentle squeeze again just to get the, the brush wet again just go around and this is so easy to do you can do this with a normal paintbrush it doesn't have to be an aqua painter so you don't need any special stuff okay so that's that leaf done so i'm going to move on to pink flower now so just going to go around like that and go up to the edges so on these stamps there are lines so this will be more or less to show you where the shading is going to be on the flower so you can actually go in with your the same color that you've used on your stamp to create some shading but this is going to be just a simple box um, you can use this as well as as a card and while we're here I'm going to add some yellow I didn't actually add any yellow to the center of my flowers on the um, on the box but I think a bit of yellow would look nice so I'm just going to squeeze yeah this one is daffodil delight I'm just going to add that to the center it's just going to warm up the center there because you can get roses with a nice yellow hue in the middle okay so I'm just going to wipe that off it's quite a hot day so I'm going to keep my ink pads closed Okay, so I'm going to quickly show you the purple flower and then I'm going to do the rest off camera and then I shall be back just to show you the finished results and then we can put our box together then. So yeah, this is just exactly the same. I may not add the, per um, the yellow to the middle of the purple flowers. I may just go in with the, um, the same purple just to darken the centre. Okay, so squeeze, squeeze. drop that in the center and if you want to go slightly darker there is another darker color it's perfect plum which I oops those are my measurements from another project okay so it's perfect plum but I'm not going to use that today there's quite a lot going on here and I want to keep the box very simple so I'm just going to flick those out go darker here Okay, so I'm going to do the rest off camera and then I'll be right back. Okay, so that's all done. It's dry. It's dry. Um, I quickly blasted it with my heat tool and that's dried it because it needs to be absolutely bone dry, completely dry before we score it now. So let's get on with our box making. So I have some soft sky here. Uh, this is from Stampin' Up. And this measures 8 by 8 and this is 6 by 6 So I'm going to grab my mini scoreboard I believe this should fit on there so we'll do the base first and before we actually score that I need to take a sliver off two of the corners so this measures 8 by 8 and I need to take 1 16th of an inch off so that our lid will fit perfectly so that's 8 by 8 so we take it down one little notch and then oops that's not going to go through you take a little slither off here so if your um, trimmer doesn't have the sixteenths of an inch that is how much you need to take off so you take that off one side you turn it and then do exactly the same one sixteenth of an inch Oops. My blade is getting a little bit blunt, so it's not cutting too well, but I have spares. I just need to change it. So, so you take one off that side and one off that side, and then your lid should fit on there perfectly. Okay, so I'm using my mini scoreboard here. This is Martha Stewart. So we're going to score 
at two inches on all four sides. And I hope you can see what I'm doing. Let's just lift the camera up. There we go. Two inches all round. Okay, so that's the base done. Now on with our cover. So I'm using it the uh, image side upwards. And we're going to score at one inch. Just double check that it is one inch because it's measure twice, score once. Same with cutting. Yep, one inch. How many times I've scored in the wrong place. Unbelievable. Okay, so that's one inch all the way around. So that's all the scoring done. So let's get creasing. Bone folder again. Okay, so I have the valley side here of our score lines. So I'm folding it with the valley on the inside. So not the valley, the mountain. So let's start again. That's the mountain side. This is the valley side where we made the score lines. So we fold with the valley on the outside and then the mountain raised part folds in. So that will help our cardstock to go in the direction we want it to without cracking and stretching itself. It, um, it cracks because it stretches itself too far because you bent it the wrong way and it, and it won't it won't like that and it'll crack. Okay so that's the lid done. Do exactly the same Oops, I did that the wrong way. Exactly the same on the other side. Using the bone folder will give you professional results with the creases. So really good creases and your box will look a whole lot better if you use a bone folder. So grab your scissors. I'm using my favourite. These are Stampin' Up Snips. So snip to the left of the score line score lines on the flap and then we cut that off completely and then we taper the other edge as well so when we put our box together we don't have any edges from the flap sticking out of the lid so we're just going to go around all four edges and we're going to do exactly the same on this box there Okay, so exactly the same. This one's just a little larger. Pull downwards. If you pull upwards, you may tear it up here. So always pull downwards. Okay, so we've cut everything that needs to be cut and I'm going to be using two sorts of adhesive. I'm going to be using wet glue, so this is Tombow, on the watercolour paper. I have used fast fuse on this on here and I found that it comes undone. I think it's because it's such a textured piece of paper, uh, cardstock. So I'll be using fast fuse on this card here. Let's quickly grab that. So. Go down the lines here, going close to the um, 
the score line but not completely on it so these these boxes here would fit a pair of baby shoes in absolutely perfectly or any other little handmade item and could fit chocolates in there it's a good size box there's loads of things that you could try and put in there Okay, so that's the base done. Moving over now, I'm going to use Tombow. So this plugs up a little bit, so you just wipe that bit off. That's that's fine. That's normal. Okay, so I'm going to do my best not to get any on my fingers, because the minute I get any on my fingers, it will go on to the rest of the project. It's like it's like King Midas, literally. You touch the glue and everything else just you touch, it just gets ruined. So the glue spreads round so this is a very strong glue once it's set as well so it's perfect for your card projects so it does set very fast so you just hold it there it's actually quite a hot day so I remember last year I was filming in the summer and my Tombow glue was actually drying before I could actually get the things stuck together. So yeah, I kind of just, uh, I gave up filming on that day. So it's it's 11 o'clock now, 11 o'clock in the morning here. It's, and it's gonna be a scorcher of a day as well. So we're just coming up to it getting quite hot now. Okay, so there's our box made. So. It's not that hard. If you use PVA glue, you would not get everything stuck together um, as quickly as this. So this is one of the great properties of, of Tombow and also um, if you have a Scotch quick dry adhesive as well, that has the same sort of properties where it just dries so fast and you can keep your projects together so they don't fall apart. Do you remember, if you remember being at school and you're making like boxes and things, or projects will fall apart if you're not actually holding them together for ages. Okay, so here we go. Here's our box. It's coming together quite nicely. And now we're going to do our tag here. So we're going to do some heat embossing. So you're going to need white heat embossing powder. And you're going to need some Versamark. That's the watermark stamp pad. It's completely clear. And I'm going to use my embossing buddy, that's anti-static, so I don't get extra powder sticking to my card. And a matching piece of cardstock that goes with the base of the box. This measures two by three. And I have here a stamping up scalloped tag topper. Okay, so all the materials that I've used today are going to be on my blog, so the link will be down below, so go and visit that, and all the dimensions will be on my blog as well, so don't worry about writing everything down, just enjoy the video. Maybe I should have said that before I started making the box. Okay, so I'm using a corner rounder here. Embossing buddy. Okay, so I've taken the happy birthday... This is also from Hobby Art. Uh, it's from the Daffs and Bells. It's one of their monthly specials. And I've taken the happy birthday here. So I do have a card that I made with that. That's on my website. And um, if I can remember, I'll put the link down below for that Bluebell card that I made. If I do forget, make a comment and then just jog my memory and then I'll add it. stuck down grab a spoon I use a disposable spoon there we go just double check the lights not very good at the moment I've got to have the curtains closed a little bit because it's so sunny out there so everything's drying really fast okay so I'm gonna preheat my heat tool now and then I'll be back 
Okay, so I've preheated my heat tool. The reason why I've done that is so that it speeds up the heating process. So there'll be less heat actually hitting the card and it will just zap the, um, the embossing powder without warping it as much. So let's go. gold thread I did have some here there we go this is tiny gold thread you see how fine that is that's from stamping up as well this is really fiddly so stick that through it wants to behave there we go and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie a knot just here and then we'll feed that through the ribbon when we put our ribbon on the box. There we go, that's in a knot. I can trim that off now. Set that aside and now we can move on to getting our ribbon on. It's not actually ribbon, I've got some seam binding here that I bought for making aprons. So. Um, I didn't want anything shiny on the box and this is absolutely perfect, it's strong and it's, it'll do, it's fine. So in order to make sure you have the right amount of ribbon, take your box and we're going to measure from this side, so all three sides, this side, this side, this side, just like that. So I'm going to do it five times, so that's one, two, three. four and five and then we can trim that off okay so get yourself enough ribbon so you can tie a loop and a, or a little bow just on this side so that's that should be enough so we have that there and then we wrap it round just like so and then you take this side here and you fold it so it's at a right angle. So you're still holding it with your thumb here. You wrap it round and above like that. And I think I may just have enough. I think I may have too much this side. Let's start again. So this does take a bit of practice. So we'll have about, we'll have about that much. So you can always pause this, rewind it, and keep going back to it until you get it right. So we fold it round like that, and around, and that will give us the flat bottom. And then what we do is we take this end here and we go underneath, and we pull it through. And then we pull it tight. So just make it central. You can have it off to the edge if you want. So here I'm going to add my tag. It's so fiddly. There we go. Add the tag there. And then you can tie a bow however you want. My favourite way is just to make a loop and then another loop here. And then pull it through. And there we go. Pull the tails down and then sort out your loops. So this one loops massive. And there we go. And just make it more central. It's gone off to the edge a bit. Okay, so just play with your loops and make them look pretty. There we go. Now you can either cut your ribbon like that or you can make little tails by folding it and cutting that way. But I'm just gonna do this. Going for the simple look today. There we go, and there's our box. Oh, that came off. Oh, the knot came undone. Never mind. I'll tie that on 
make sure that it's all pretty for the photographs. Okay, so all the dimensions are on my website. The link will be down below. If you like this video, please do give me a thumbs up. And thank you ever so much for joining me today, and I'll see you next time.